Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, collection review for DMR. I read his mail that he sent to me at uptickwr at gmail.com. Dear Monsieur Uptick, thank you so much for sharing your thoughtful collection reviews on YouTube. Please find this request and some thoughts and observations for your consideration and feedback. You can use DMR as my nom de horlogerie if you like. Background, guys, if you see this, uh, this collection, can you guess what job he's doing? I give you three seconds. Background, I am an architect, yes, in my late 50s, who has traveled extensively, uh, but in the US and abroad, and, uh, and I lived extended periods in Tokyo and Taipei in the 90s. As we emerge from COVID, I do see traveling again for work and pleasure, and I have been a serious hiker for about 40 years. Between uh, 2000 and uh, 2015, I tended to purchase off eBay mostly cheap watches, $300 to $1,500 that caught my attention from brands like Oris, Ebel, Glycine and all that. In the early 2010s, I picked up the first higher quality watch, uh, 1950s Omega Constellation, yes, a Coney with pipe pan dial. I eventually sold all the other watches to build a quality collection with a focus on form factor. I have a smaller wrist and a mix of functions and of course as an architect an authentic combination of design and engineering with a sense of long-term quality as I intend to leave a collection eventually to my now 14 year old son who as a start has a 2008 116 triple zero Rolex OP blue with Explorer dial that I gifted to him last year for a live event and which I admittedly put on once in a while. My seven piece collection consists of the following in order of acquisition, uh, 1950s Omega Constellation, Pan 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 Pi 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 Pan Dial, classic on a custom strap. Uh, number two, uh, 2019 Tudor Black Bay 58. Yes, uh, good value. My hiking companion on a NATO. Number three, 2000, 2008, uh, 116 Rolex OP with a concentric dial and Explorer Air King indices. He, he liked his son's OP so much that he picked up uh, the similar but a little more funky version right there. Number four, 2021, reference to 68622, the Rolex Yachtmaster 37mm rhodium dial. See, he wasn't afraid to go for the what is considered generally the lady's size. Buy watches to your size, not uh, oversized. That's a good plan. Number five, 1991 16570 Rolex Explorer 2 Polar Dial. Uh, he sold a Grand Seiko SBGJ 011 GMT High Beat. He loved it, but it was a bit too large for his wrist. Number six, 2020 Grand Seiko Sky Flake. Surprisingly sporty on a rubber strap, dressy on the OEM leather and somewhere in the middle on my custom beaver strap. Ooh, beaver strap, that's exotic. Uh, number seven, and we don't condone animal violence, of course. It must have been a dead beaver. Number seven, uh, 2019 Omega Planet Ocean Tokyo 2020 edition, 39.5 millimeter, perfect fit despite its thickness on my wrist, great bracelet and love the red accents and its clear white difference from a Rolex diver. He by the way sold a Blancpain Batiscaf 38mm which had quality issues, hmm interesting. With uh, this background um, it has occurred to me uh, to think of the seven watches as a series of sub collections. Um, yeah I do that too, you know we like to see things in a uh, to compart put things in compartments in our brains. Uh, Sub-collection number one, Neo and Vintage with the Yachtmaster, the Black Bay 58 and the Omega Constellation. Sports dress with the OP, Grand Seco Skyflake on Tropic Strap. And overseas travel and vacation with the Explorer 2 and the Omega, Omega PO. Sub-collection number two, we got the Divers Beaters with the Black Bay and the Omega. 
uh, upscale occasions with the Yachtmaster and the Coney and daily rotation with the OP Explorer 2 Skyflake. Okay, and sub collection number three uh, Rolex, three, four of a kind with the Yachtmaster Explorer 2, the OP, and the Tudor, uh, and Omega, a pair with the Coney, the PO, and then the Grand Seco as the wild card. All right, uh, would love to know if you see others or I mean, if you see differently, I suppose he means, or you see something completely uh, different. Uh, at the moment, I have no desire to trade watches in or out, as I did several moves in the past year to get to where I am. But of course, I do think once in a while about how to get the collection down to a core of three or even down to one of the current seven. Though seeing them as, uh, as sub-collections makes that a bit tougher. <clears throat> Finally, is there a big bang watch, I guess, uh, which uh, cashes them out for a one and done for the generations? Thank you in advance and look forward for the review. Thank you so much, uh, DMR. What a nice collection. <coughs> I love first that you went for the things uh, properly sized to, to your wrist and uh, didn't hesitate selling whatever you thought was, uh, was too large. I like the look of the watches you got some um, no date you got some uh, some dates a bit of vintage a bit of modern but everything forms a, a great mix uh, you, you have uh, a GMT there a larger diver and then a more vintage diver with the Black Bay 58 which I have as well and I use every weekend you have a power reserve on the spring drive Grand Seiko and uh, one of my favorites here, a watch that I considered exactly in that dial configuration myself, is uh, your OP there. I think those are really, really cool. There's many different dials you can choose from. Uh, and uh, I, th I think those have a great charm and a great presence on the wrist. And you've avoided a lot of the, uh, the, the classics, which can become boring so sometimes. So you, you get a little twist there with the... Uh, with the Yachtmaster, those are beautiful in person. Uh, that bezel, platinum bezel, just a fantastic bit of uh, bit of blue. Um, everything is very uh, touches of blue, but not crazy. Touches touches of blue, gray, white, and black. It, it's very nice, and you have a nice vintage, some sector dial action as well in there. Look, I think uh, that, that there's nothing to to change uh, here. Uh, you know, if you have if you want to have one and done that does everything, I get. I guess the yacht master does everything because it's uh, it's classy but it's sporty um, you know if you just had that one uh, I think it summarizes everything else it summarizes the the sportiness of the, the Omega it has enough water resistance it's a bit quirky like the like the OP it's a it's a classic Swiss watch you know if you had to have only one good-looking watch that's a perfect watch but I love your collection I think everything works perfectly together it's really at your image an architect I think it's carefully considered good colors good shapes everything wonderful I think the one thing uh, missing well before we get there uh, would I reduce it well as I said uh, you've you've got sub collections I think everything works well you haven't spent a crazy amount on, on anything what's the point you know uh, selling selling the um, the black bay which is very usable or the planet ocean which is a very complementary of the the rest uh, of your of your watches even the grand seiko is fine you gotta have one it has a power reserve string drive it's in uh, it, it's interesting um, so far I think so far you've done a, a great job uh, and good on you for selling all the uh, the cheap stuff. I always said, you know, in my five phases five phases of watch collecting, it's okay to get excited at first, uh, but really don't buy more than one e one or two watches with an ETA and a Valju uh, movement because they're all the same. You know, they're all a different shell, and you can make a pretty watch for a hundred dollar. It really means nothing. At some point, you want something serious inside, which brings me to what the one watch. I would add to this collection it has to be manufacturer like all your watches manufacturer caliber I like the bit of blue the gray the white uh, theme that you have going on bit of black you seem to like uh, nice touches of blue you seem to like 
sector dials, you can still find the perfect chronograph, which is, I think, is what what you're missing in the Jeugeur Le Coultre Master Control Chronograph. So it was a collection that lasted for one year. So a bit more difficult to find, but you can still find them, and they don't cost a fortune. It's reasonable, and is this this watch has your name on it? It is would fit perfectly with everything for an architect with an eye for for quality for beauty great build serious brand that you don't have in your collection great symmetry there i think this watch is perfect so try to find one look on chrono 24 look at dealers uh, sub ten thousand dollar you can still find uh, that watch now is there a big bang watch to answer your final question to cash it all, you know, is, is, is difficult because if you do that, you put all your eggs in one basket, you know, maybe keep one diver for the, the weekend or for uh, go, going on hikes, uh, you know. Uh, you, you can go Patek, of course. Uh, to me, that, that's the Big Bang watch of Big Bang watches, you know. It starts with the annual calendar, you know, 5146, maybe the outgoing version, or the uh, uh, um, 5396 very very beautiful very beautiful uh, there's many different versions you can choose the, the one you love and then you can go to, for wall timer as well those are very interesting and they make them in smaller versions what's great with Patek is that you can find smaller smaller watches as well um, but really I'd rather you add Calatrava maybe in a few years celebrate your 60th birthday maybe with a Calatrava, like a sector dial, like mine, the 5296, for example, that would be a great compliment, you know. What I would get right now is the Jeugeur, sector dial, chronograph, and then maybe look into the, uh, into the Patek Calatrava. But Big Bang, you know, to replace everything, then you can go up, you know, perpetual calendar, but it's very finicky. I don't know if you want all that worry. Your watches are no worry watches, most of them. Uh, really great build very solid and uh, and a look that won't fade with with trends uh, you know ultimate game you know is the Patek 55270 for example but it's a bit big for you so you have to look at the 3970 for for example or the 5970 uh, manual wine chronograph perpetual calendar but those cost a fortune of course so if you had a big payout you know if you if you won the, a bit of the the lottery there sure get something like that that's a big bang watch but otherwise no don't change anything to your collection i think reflects you your journey your personality you chose them well it's very solid it's um it's uh, very usable all of them they're very complementary they don't step on each other's toes they all have a bit of collectability if you look at them uh, really closely uh, not maybe top top collectibles but all have a bit of that quality of being collectible that's why i recommend the, the Jeugeur for you to add this is really my advice for you hopefully uh, you you will follow it you'll find that um, that you'll enjoy the watch very much thank you guys for watching and i'll speak to you all in the next one let me know in the comments what you think of the collection and of the advice bye bye guys